Hello, everyone. Good morning, or good wherever you are in the world.、Uh, welcome to this free live call.、Um, today, we will be talking about the fear of missing out and self sabotage. This is another one of my audio live trainings. I know that I posted this,、uh, something similar on YouTube the other day, and people were confused thinking that the recording was stuck. But no, this is an audio. And hopefully later this week, I'll return to doing video again. I'm just kind of wrapping up and bouncing back from spring break. Welcome. If you're live, let us know in the comments, or if you're watching the replay, let us know as well. Uh, before we get started, I'm letting a few people hop on.、Uh, I do want to mention that today, the Worthy Vision Workshop, which is my short program on、uh, finding your true desires, creating a vision board, and、uh, staying in high vibration so you can manifest your desires,、uh, it's a short program. It's for $5.、Um, Typically retails for $47. Today it's on sale for five. So go ahead and grab that if you haven't already. I'll post a link in the description box or you can find it on my website, which is theuniverseguru.com. So today's video I'm a little nervous about because it's going to be a vulnerable video.、Uh, it's something that it's been kind of on my mind for a while. And I don't know why I've been putting it out. So, anyways, I've got the jitters this morning, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, as many of you、uh, that have been following me for a while know, I launched a business、uh, about a year and a half ago. And la- later、uh, part of last year, it's taken off the charts、uh, much.、Uh, You know, I mean, I'm pleasant, pleasantly so,、uh, but this is the second time in my life that I've had a business just kind of boom and take off. And I'm in a different part of my life now than I was the first time this happened in my early 20s. And I've made, I've come to a lot of kind of aha moments in the, in the last few weeks that I wanted to kind of share with everyone. Happy Monday, uh, Nyla. Uh, welcome, everyone. So, fear of missing out. What is the fear of missing out? It's this sort of feeling that there's more to be done, that there's happiness that is kind of outside of us,、um, waiting for us, and that if we're not doing everything, we're not living our lives, we're not going out, we're not doing XYZ, that we're somehow missing out in life, right? FOMO.、Uh, for the longest time, I would see this word or this phrase or this. Acronym, whatever you want to call it, popping up. And I was like, what the hell is that? FOMO? So last year I Googled it and I'm like, okay, fear of missing out. I guess we've all experienced this at one point or another. So later part of last year, I started following these. Business, female business gurus, right? Looking for inspiration for my own business that I had launched. And There was this one phrase that kept popping up everywhere, everywhere, and it was this phrase stop playing it small, stop playing it small, small, right? And I don't know what it was about this phrase, but it really just stuck with me and it started bothering me. I kept thinking, Am I playing it small? Am I, you know, living this life of comfort and simplicity and minimalism, and that I'm somehow missing out on something that I'm supposed to be doing or experiencing? And I noticed that my thoughts and my behavior started changing the more I came in contact with this phrase. And it was almost like I was attracting it because I was only a part of, I would say, about four or five business groups, but it kept popping up all the time in my, in my feed on Facebook and Instagram and other places. And I kept Trying to push my limits and my boundaries the more I saw this saying, Oh my God, yes, I'm playing it small. I need to dream big. I need to live big. And I quickly started noticing that I started losing gratitude in my life. And you know that if you've been following me for any number of time, you know that the one thing that I always want to be known for in my life and in the work that I do is gratitude. 
Gratitude is that single one word that's changed my life the most. The second I would say is the Arabic word sakun, which means inner peace, which I always have on my vision board. But this word gratitude <clears throat> in the last 12 years has completely, completely turned my life around. And I noticed that I was losing this feeling of gratitude. Now I was forcing myself to still have gratitude. In the morning, I would still practice my three things I was more grateful for at nighttime. Before I fell asleep, I would think of, you know, 10 things I was grateful for. But I noticed that it wasn't radiating from my inner core and my being the way that it had in the last 12 years. And things really started shifting. There was always this feeling of, I need to do more. I need to stop playing it small. I need to push more, work more, do more, feel more, love more. And there was this always the striving for happiness and success that was all of a sudden outside of me, outside of my home, outside of my family. And I started feeling this this sense of wanting to crawl out of my skin almost. And I couldn't understand it. I couldn't see the connection. It didn't dawn on me until, um, as a, generally as a practice, every month, at the end of the month, uh, my husband and I will sit down for a few minutes and go over our finances and just talk about you know, our business and how much we've made in the business and how much we've done, kind of the net take home. And in February, my business took took net profit of $28,900. $28, and as my husband was giving me this figure, my thought was, okay, great. Well, how much am I going to do in March? You know, and I didn't say this out to him, but I just had this feeling. And I was really bothered by this because I remember at one point in my business last year, I was making $2,500 a month and I was really happy and grateful, deeply, deeply grateful for this $2,500 a month. I was just overjoyed and every day I would say, oh my God, you know, I'm living the dream. I'm here at home with my babies and I'm here cooking and cleaning and being present in my life. And I'm making this $2,500, I'm helping so many people and adding so much value and I'm so grateful. Yet in February, I made so much money, far beyond you know anything I imagined in my at-home business, putting in only a couple of hours a day. Yet I felt this sense of, well, what's more? And what's, what's the next step? How can I make more? And it, this really, really bothered me because I realized as I reflected in the last few weeks of my life has changed in the last few months. I mean, yes, I feel gratitude for all this money I'm making and all these people I'm ha helping and all this value that I'm adding. But I also sense, feel this like bothered by the stop playing it small. And I sat back and I said, well, what is my life blueprint, right? That's what I teach my clients. This is what I teach my followers on YouTube and Facebook to have this life blueprint, to have this end goal in mind and to work your way backwards. And when I sat down with that, I realized that it did not matter how much I made in February or March, right? It did not matter to me because my end goal blueprint did not include money. It included this life of satisfaction and happiness and gratitude and peace. It included having the satisfaction of living moments of happiness with my family and my children and my loved ones. It did not matter what I made on, on this, you know, in February or March or April or any month, that that was not part of my blueprint. And as I sat there looking back at that, I realized that, I have this unique situation where everybody else is probably looking at me and saying, Mina is living life, right? I never have to worry about money a day in my life. Like my husband and I, for those of you guys that are new to the channel or to my Facebook group, my husband and I have finally this year reached our dream goal number of financial independence. What this means for us is that if Irfan and I decided today that we never have to work a day in our lives, we don't have to. Our net worth would sustain us for the rest of our lives 
and leave a hefty next like money uh, inheritance for our three children. Uh, of course, Irfan is still wrapping up his work and he's taking this last year to kind of wrap things up for him. And I work because I find joy and pleasure in my work and knowing that I add value in the lives of others. This is my joy and my passion. Yet, because of me following other Facebook groups or other uh, business success groups, which I don't think there's anything wrong with it, it's just knowing that my final life blueprint does not include playing it big. It includes having a life of simplicity, of having a life of love, of having a life of those small moments of joy, right? Oftentimes we live life thinking that joy lies in those big moments, right? The big celebrations, the big wedding, the big vacations, um, those big uh, bonuses, um, those big, I don't know, uh, parties. Yet what if the joy lies in those everyday mundane moments of laughing and spending time with our loved ones. I want to say hi to a few people. And then I want to talk to a little bit about what happened when I started playing it big in my life. Uh, hi, Alexis, Nyla, Famina, uh, Magna, welcome, dear Chelsea. Uh, I'm so happy to have you guys. Welcome, everyone. We're talking about fear of missing out. So as you ladies know that as I got, sorry about the interruption, people, there was a call in the middle. Okay, so as I got busy in my business, I decided that I was missing out and there was more to do and more to be had. So what I started doing was I started hiring help. Um, I hired a uh, I'm a cleaning lady to come into our home every week and clean my home top to bottom. And quickly that led to me also hiring a uh, company, a, a state, you know, a biz, uh, at home business to start cooking for my family, which also led to me hiring another company that makes keto meals, making meals for me. And it was really convenient, and of course, it you know it was a very small amount of money for me, considering how much I was making in my business. So I thought, great, I'm going to just outsource the things that I no longer have time to do or use my time wisely. And it was really convenient, and I enjoyed it um, for the first couple of weeks. And I quickly noticed something. I noticed that I became very disembodied from my home life. Because I was no longer in the kitchen, because I was no longer taking the time and care to clean my home, bless my home, I noticed that quickly this feeling of living outside of the home, living outside of the body became one with me. And here I am teaching about feminine embodiment and living within the body. And all of a sudden I'm feeling this weird disconnection from my from my home and I couldn't figure it out. I kept thinking, well, maybe because I'm enjoying going out now and I'm playing it big and I'm not playing it small anymore, but I noticed that I was losing this connection with my deep roots, which is my home and my family. All of those small moments of joy that I would find cooking in the kitchen with my my husband while he gently um, you know, rubbed in my back or grabbed my hand or um, took me in closer for a kiss, this is what weekends looked like for us for years. And all of a sudden now I was losing that connection with him. And I kept thinking, okay, well maybe we ne needed to plan more romantic dates and we started going out more and doing romantic things which yes that was fun but I noticed that that joy that we had in the everyday mundane romance the, the kisses stolen in the kitchen while cooking together you know the gentle hugs um, the letting each other taste what we had just cooked all of those moments I was robbing myself and my family from because of this concept of well I need to play it big now and I sat down the other day when my husband was quietly sitting and I asked him, I said, you know, you seem to have this sort of calm about you. And I'm like, do you ever feel this fear of missing out, this FOMO? And I had to actually even explain the term for him because he wasn't aware of this like new term language of the word FOMO. And so when I explained it to him, he's like, oh yes, that. 
He's like, I used to feel that, but I don't feel it anymore. I'm like, tell me more about that. So he reminded me that after his his divorce from his ex-wife, he had this period of like nine years. It was actually seven years after his divorce, but previous to that, he was separated from his ex-wife for a couple of years. So he said this nine years he spent by himself where he got to do a lot of thinking, a lot of going out, a lot of reflection, a lot of um, dealing with his like inner demons and shadows. And I said, oh, wow, so you've done the inner work. And he's like, well, yeah, if that's what you want to call it. And and when he, the more he was talking about it, the more I realized, yes, this is exactly what inner work means. And first of all, even though I knew that he had spent this time alone, I had never, it never dawned on me that he had spent this time doing a lot of deep inner work. And so that was my first realization that this this calm and this contentment that he is surrounded with comes from his spending the years doing inner work. And so he said that he had the chance to go out and like have fun and go out with his friends and travel and do all those lovely things. But that the more he did those things, the more he realized that that's not where his happiness lies, that he really wanted a family and children and this settle, like being settled and calm at home. And so now when he had this, he never felt this feeling of having, wanting to be somewhere else or finding happiness and some, and being or doing something else. He knew that that fear of missing out was actually him not missing anything at all, that he wanted to be at home with us. And this really, when he was talking to me about this, um, I reminded him of this uh, conversation that he was having with us. So his best friend also lives in Houston and his best friend and his lovely wife just had um, twin daughters. And we were out to lunch with them the other day and we were talking to them and I remember Afran making this comment that had stuck with him. He had said to his best friend that freedom is overrated. And so I was, I had given Irfan a really strange look at that moment. But it at, when he was having this conversation with him, about fear of missing out, it made sense. So I said, hey, that day that you were talking to your friend and you said freedom is overrated, what did you mean by that? And he said, we were talking about how your life changes after kids and you sometimes have this moment where you think, oh, well, I can't just get up and leave, you know, and go anymore. If I go somewhere, I have to think about the kids or, you know, coming back home and things. And his friend was talking about how his life had just changed because of these twins. And Irfan was telling him, that that freedom, that sense of freedom of being able to get up and run and go somewhere is overrated because when I had that, I wanted nothing more than to have a family and have the sense of purpose and significance in life that you get from providing for and caring for people outside of yourself. And I'm like, ah, oh, that makes sense because of course freedom is something we fight for and we strive for and we want to create. And so when he had made that comment, I had gave him that weird look but it made sense to me when he said it that way when and when I was having this conversation with Irfan it really made me understand now why I felt this kind of disconnection and disembodiment from my home because I had forgotten and lost lost sight of my blueprint my end goal in life it doesn't matter to me how I create my freedom what route I take, whether people are creating, making food for me, whether somebody else is cleaning my home for me, whether I'm doing it myself, whatever route I take, it doesn't matter as long as I'm here and present fully in my body and enjoying and valuing those moments that I, the whole purpose of having the freedom is to be here right now with my family and enjoy this moment. So if I'm not enjoying the moment and thinking that, the happiness lies in something outside of my family or outside of me or outside of my home, then I'm lost. Then I don't have freedom. I'm not free because I'm stuck. I'm kind of like a slave to the next big thing of happiness. This next big goal in business, that next big party, you know, and I even, um, I admit these things to my husband, even though I tell them, I, I wonder if other wives, when they have these sort of aha moments, if they discuss them with their husbands, because oftentimes when I have these, there's a lot of going back to Irfan and saying, oh my God, you were right, honey. I realize this now. 
And one of the biggest blessings of my life is that even when my husband can see that I'm making a mistake or I'm taking the wrong right route, he do, he's not the type of man that pulls me down and says, I told you so, or I know this is going to end were bad or you're running around in circles honey he lets me make those mistakes for myself and come back that full circle and so I told him that I said I really appreciate you giving me the time even when you can see the clear picture of the mistakes that I'm making and you see me running around in circles sometimes you see me going full on right in the wrong direction you don't correct me and he says that I, it's because I always know that you will return home. And he's like, I want it to be your decision and your route back home versus me pulling you back and stopping you because I know that I've had the time to reflect and do that inner work. And maybe in your life, you're just getting to the deep stuff now. And in that moment, I took the time to thank him for providing this opportunity for me because I cannot forget that I once was a single mom that was so busy, so disembodied, so just running around from one task, task to the next. And if it wasn't for Irfan giving me this wonderful blessing and opportunity to stay at home with my children, to have the time and space to read and reflect and make my mistakes and then come back full circle, I wouldn't be here. And so I can't forget the people that lay the red carpet out for me to be able to do this work that I do, not only for myself and for my family, for, but for the greater community that is mine here that I've created. And I think that in this striving for creating the next big thing and living out our passions and creating these amazing businesses or lives for ourselves, which again, there's nothing wrong with that. We cannot forget to live life and be fully, fully present here because I realized that somehow this becomes a way of self-sabotaging, right? I've created this blueprint in my life. I've worked myself backwards and realized, okay, I want to be here present with my family. I want to create meaning for, with connections with them and with people that I come in contact with here on social media. But Sometimes running around in circles can be self-sabotage because if we create this life for ourselves, we get everything we want, but yet we keep looking at social media and thinking, well, there is something more to be had. I'm playing it small. What if playing it small is what I want and what I need and that's what gives me my peace and contentment in life? What if Playing it big isn't what brings me joy, but it brings me chaos and anxiety and overwhelm. What if small is perfectly fine in my life because this is what I've built my entire legacy on. Playing it small means playing Play-Doh with my daughter, playing, playing, you know, blowing bubbles outside with her and not worrying about where my next client is coming from or how much money I'm going to earn this month or did my husband plan those perfectly romantic dates? You know, that's one of the funny things, ladies, is that um, Irfan and I are both homebodies. And we, of course, enjoy going out once in a while as well. But we've our relationship and marriage has succeeded on being homebodies. Yet I've noticed that once I started doing this relationship coaching, I've wanted to have like more romantic dates. And of course, my husband wanting to make me happy has complied happily and he's been planning so many romantic dates for us and we're doing all these wonderful adventurous things, which yes, we've been enjoying. But one side effect of that is that I took away from him all those little things that he used to do for me and, and that I, find, I used to find joy in. And he still finds joy in those, but I've kind of taken that away, uh, some of the value there in wanting him to do more romantic dates outside the home. So like I mentioned, one of his best joys, like the things that makes our fun come alive is cooking brunch together on the weekend. Saturdays and Sunday mornings, we quick cook uh, brunch together and he loves it. I mean, he'll dance while we're doing it. He'll like give me all these romantic kisses and hugs and pats on the back, you know, all these things. Like he, it just makes him come alive. He lives for those moments. And I noticed that 
I wasn't doing that as much anymore. Or when I was doing it, it was coming from a place of resentment of like, let's get this over with so my real life can get started where we're going out on this romantic date or I'm leading the next live class or I'm creating the next program. And I apologized to him the other day saying, you know what, honey? I so appreciate you taking the time and planning all these wonderful romantic dates and I really enjoy them. Um, but I want to apologize to you because I feel like that somehow planning those big dates have robbed us from those little things that we used to enjoy together. And he's like, thank you so much for realizing it and saying it. He's like, I've been feeling that void for the longest time. And I said, why didn't you say so? And he's like, I knew that you would figure it out in time. And that is the beauty of stopping sometimes and noticing and taking inventory, like I've said in a lot of my YouTube videos, taking inventory of life's blessings and that sometimes playing it big makes us lose a million small things that we use to take joy in, okay? And we feel this kind of rush from task to task, this next big thing, and we lose track of all those little things in life. I want to leave you ladies with one last thought. Um, I don't know if it's a thought or kind of just an explanation that kind of came about in one of those deep conversations that I was having with my husband the other day. Um, and he said, thank you so much for explaining that to me because I, re I didn't really realize that about you. So I'm wondering if you ladies have picked up on this. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of programs. I do a lot of self rec reflection, growth, inner work. And this is just a part of me. I don't think I can ever stop this because I've been like this since I was a little girl. So every time I come in contact with a new concept that really gives me an aha moment, I have this um, need to self-immerse into it fully. I really embody it. I learn about it. I research about it. I really like make it me. But while I'm doing it, I kind of Swing on a pendulum is how Irfan explained it when I finally explained this concept to him. So let's say I come in contact with the new concept of feminine energy and I start reading about it, but my my the way of being is I don't just read about, read about it, I immerse into it. So I start reading about it and I start doing it sideways alongside reading about it, researching it. And as I do this, I really start embodying it and taking it on. I've done this with every everything. If you follow my minimalism journey, if you follow my weight loss journey, my grain-free journey, anything, any of my journeys on YouTube you follow, you will notice this pattern. So when I started researching something, I really, really like start biohacking it as well, which means I start embodying it. In that moment of doing that, I take all different stances on it. So I will go all in. And then I will learn a lot about it, make a lot of mistakes, and readjust myself. Then I'll go all in, make a lot of mistakes, readjust myself. So Irfan described it as when you come into contact with something, a new concept, you start swinging on this pendulum of going all in, moving back, going all in, moving back, until you find a place where you park yourself. And I, this is exactly how my entire life has been with anything new I've learned, except I've never been able to explain it to anybody. So when I explained it to him and he gave me this new terminology, it really was an aha moment for both of us because he said that from his point of view, I go all in and then I readjust myself and he sees this as like, okay, she's really into this and I'm with her. And then, oh my God, she's fizzling out. So where do I go with this information now? And the way I told him, he said that then the important thing to do with this is don't take yourself so seriously when you're going on in. And when with your followers, when you're coming in contact with a new concept, let them know, hey, I'm just trying this out. Because this creates this feeling of people saying, hey, I thought you were here in your minimalism journey and now you're here. Or I thought you were not going to eat dairy and now you're eating it. You know, that that's not true. I still don't eat dairy, but I'm dairy, but I'm just giving you an example. But to me, it's like, but I was still learning, so I'm still readjusting myself. But I understand what he means is because it can be quite confusing for people if they watch a certain video and they see me at one point and they watch another video and I've readjusted myself. But from my point of view, this works for me in my life because 
I don't want to just be someone that just does research and studies something and never implements it. And I also don't want to be someone that implements some, something and just because I've announced it, I'm stuck there, even though I'm, I'm unhappy. So when you watch my videos or learn anything, know that my concepts are my journey of where I am at that current state. And I'm constantly readjusting myself based on new information. I want to be, my ultimate goal and happy is to have peace and inner joy and happiness. So I'm not going to stay somewhere that doesn't serve me right? I'm always experimenting with my life. When you learn concepts from me, don't take out the key concept of making it your own. Following my advice to the T will serve me. It may not serve you, right? Make it your own, experiment with it and see where you land in your journey. So that's it for today, ladies. Don't forget that my vision board workshop is $5 for today. And this is your chance of creating your vision board. Um, for only $5, you get my program and get to see um, how you can find your desires and create your vision board of your life. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. I will let everyone go. I'm working on the Glam Goddess program, which is uh, program four of the Feminine Goddess program. Uh, so I will continue working on that. And that should be releasing on April first. I hope you guys enjoyed this talk today and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.